A planked up hull has lots of holes to fill. Every fastening head needs plugging. I normally do this in the middle of the hull fairing process, which I start by planing the surface and checking that I'm getting rid of the bumps and high spots. I fit the plugs after planing, but before sanding the hull with sanding boards, often referred to as torture boards. We'll discuss plugs shortly, but first we need to talk about how to deal with the larger imperfections in the planks, mainly in the form of knots. At the very least, a large knot will forever disrupt the paint coatings applied. Yeah, this one's going to need one. And, and that one. Uh, this one, I'll, I'll do that with a large plug. This one, maybe, maybe not. Just a bit of filler, seeing that'll be below the waterline. Uh, this one here, no, not at all. Knots are dealt with by fitting graving pieces. We refer to them as gravos. Gravos are shaped pieces of wood let into rebates in the planking on the side of the knot. The traditional shape is something like this, but they are often just square. The rebate is routed or chiselled just less than half the plank thickness deep. The perimeter is marked from the pre-cut graver. I routed carefully freehand here, but if you've got a lot to do, it would be worthwhile making a plywood guide for the router that you would screw to the hole. But then you've got more holes to fill. I chisel the last bit toward the edges. Before waterproof glues, gravos would be bedded on white lead and nailed on. We're going to glue them in, and without fastenings, they need to be a tight enough fit not to fall out. You can help this to happen by very slightly tapering the edges. They shouldn't be too perfect a fit. You actually want some glue around them, and you need to have enough of a gap at least in one place for the glue to squeeze out. Otherwise, you won't get it to sit on the bottom of the rebate. These will be painted. If you're fitting gravos to a varnished surface, that's a whole other ball game. The glue I'm using is West System Epoxy with microspheres added. This isn't the strongest glue mix that you get with microfibers, which are used for plank scarfs, laminated deck beams and so on, but it's strong enough seeing there's a large gluing surface and no tension on the joint. And importantly, the cured mix sands easily and blends in better with the wood surface. Using the stronger microfibers leaves a hard glue line that's difficult to sand with a tendency to leave raised bits. Cut, plane and sand the gravo and after painting it, it'll be indistinguishable from the surface around it. Smaller knots can be dealt with much more quickly by using a Forstner type bit and plugging with matching plugs. Even a larger knot can sometimes be fixed with multiple large plugs. All of the fastening heads need to be plugged. On this boat, the planking nails need 3 8 inch plugs. The larger nails and screws need half inch plugs. 30 years ago, Larry Party showed me this method of making plugs and he learned it off somebody else 25 years before that. It speeds things up slightly, but the main advantage is that it makes it easy to line up the grain. Now I know that some textbooks suggest that on hull planking the grain of the plug should be aligned perpendicular to the plank grain. But these books were written by naval architects and not boat builders. In a 50 year career restoring and repairing wooden boats, I've never found plugs done that way. I've found plenty that seem to have been put in at random, but mostly the grain was parallel with the host plank. And I have to add that many boat builders around Sydney simply punched the nails below the surface and puttied up the heads with linseed oil putty. Boat builders vary on how they glue plugs in. Some use shellac and some use varnish on the basis that they'll be easier to remove. And I certainly use varnish when the surface is to be varnished. But on painted surfaces, I use the same epoxy with microspheres mix that I used for gravos for the same reason, 
it's strong enough but easy to sand. And I've never found it a big deal to remove plugs using a narrow chisel and a narrow gouge that I keep for the purpose. But having said that, it is more difficult when hard epoxy has been used over a screw as it is more difficult to clean out the slot of the screw and even more difficult if crosshead screws have been used, but not impossible. Once the glue is dry, cut the plugs off with a flush cutting saw. If there's just a few to do, you can chisel them, but you have to have several cuts to check that the grain is not going to tear out, so it's a bit slower. Sand them down as part of the fairing process. Next episode, we'll get stuck into fairing.